Hello everyone, welcome again to this video, to this channel and the goal here is to, to show to you how to perform an X bar control chart and the X bar S control chart. So both charts are very, very useful, very famous, but they are a little bit different and we have to pay attention in some details when we are performing this. So the data table that we have here is the same data table that we used to perform the IMR chart. 36 rows, 36 measures about some parts from different situations from our process. So where we can perform these charts? Analyze quality and process control chart X bar control chart. We have this little window here where we put our Y, our responsive variable inside of this field is a required numeric field. So we have our Y here and we have to pay attention here because we have some things that we can change and they are very important. So the first one is this constant subgroup size is our case here. We will not inform anything here. So jump will consider this number as the uh, how big is your subgroup. So how all the calculation will uh, be made. Okay. So I know from our from my process that we collected uh, three parts for different situations. So three parts, another three parts, another three parts, three parts. So I have a subgroup size of three. I'm gonna change this for three. I'm gonna let this as range. So the moment that I do this, I will click OK and I will have an X bar and R chart. The means of our subgroups and the range of the subgroup. All the statistical details are here. And let's see the difference between this and that one, this one. I will recall here so I have the same Y, the same number, but now I'm going to change for standard deviation. Let's see the difference. The difference is here. This chart, I have the X bar and R. All the control limits were calculated about the range of my subgroup of, si of size 3. So the mean, the average of this control chart is different from this. This chart, the X bar and S, this chart is all about standard deviation. So the average of this chart is different. So the number that were used to calculate the lower and upper control limit for this chart is different, is all about the standard deviation. So if your goal is to understand your process, your uh, range of the process uh, or your variation of the process uh, using the sigma uh, calculated by this, you can use X bar and S. I strongly recommend you to use the X bar and S chart when your subgroup is, is uh, a little bit bigger, like five parts or 10 parts uh, is a little bit uh, difficult to, to see this during the, the investigation uh, projects, but some people do so you can perform this X bar R and X bar S. What more can we do here in this chart? Control chart, X bar. Recall, I, I want to separate our process into different shifts. So I'm going to put shift here in this fade 
is uh, field. The moment that I do this, I have an X bar S for uh, shift one and an X bar S for the shift two. So two different charts, two different situations in our process, but inside of the same graph, inside of the same chart. If I want to, if I want to separate this chart in two charts, I'm going to change. I'm going to put here range. I'm going to put the shift in this by field. So now I'm going to have two different charts because I, because I put shift in the by field. So I have an X bar and R chart by shift one and another one by shift two. So I just separated uh, the situation into two different charts. So that's why we perform the X bar chart. All the analysis will depend on specific about your uh, on the, 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 the project, on the situation that you are having in your process but this is how we perform this and i really hope i could help you once more if you didn't subscribe to the channel please do it to not miss the upcoming videos bye bye see you in the next one